Hello students, today we will learn about radioisotopic techniques in biochemistry. Coming to the introduction. Radioactivity results from the spontaneous nuclear disintegration of unstable isotopes. Isotopes are the different forms of an atom having identical number of protons but different number of neutrons. For example, hydrogen occurs in three forms as hydrogen, deuterium and tritium, consisting of identical number of protons, constant charge plus one proton. Deuterium and tritium have a neutron and two neutrons respectively and only tritium is radioactive. Radioisotopes are the unstable isotopes. Types of radioactive decay. First, decay by negaton emission. A neutron is converted to a proton by the ejection of a negatively charged beta particle called a negatron. The nucleus loses a neutron but gains a proton and the mass number A remains constant. An isotope frequently used in biological work that decays by negatron emission is 14 carbon. Negatron emission is very important to biochemists because many of the commonly used radionuclides decay by this mechanism. Examples are tritium and 14 carbon which can be used to level any organic compound. Sulfur-35 used to level methionine for example to study protein synthesis and phosphorus-33 or phosphorus-32 are powerful tools in molecular biology when used as nucleic acid levels. Second one is the decay by positron emission. Some isotopes decay by emitting positively charged beta particles referred to as positrons. This occurs when a proton is converted to a neutron. Positrons are extremely unstable and have only a transient existence. Once they have dissipated their energy, they interact with electrons and are annihilated. The mass and energy of the two particles are converted to two gamma rays emitted at 180 degrees Celsius to each other. This phenomenon is frequently described as back-to-back -back emission. As the result of positron emission, the nucleus loses a proton and gains a neutron. The mass number stays the same. An example of isotope decaying by positron emission is sodium-22. Positron emitters are detected by the same instruments used to detect gamma radiation. They are used in biological sciences to spectacular effect in brain scanning, with the technique positron emission tomography, PET scanning, used to identify active and inactive areas of the brain. The third one is the decay by alpha particle emission. Isotopes of elements with high atomic numbers frequently decay by emitting alpha particles. An alpha particle is the helium nucleus. It consists of two protons and two neutrons. Emission of alpha particles results in a considerable lightening of the nucleus, a decrease in atomic number of 2, and a decrease in the mass number of 4. Isotopes that decay by alpha emission are not frequently encountered in biological work, although they can be found in instruments such as scintillation counters and smoke alarms. Radium-226 decays by alpha emission to radon-222 which is itself radioactive. Thus begins a complex decay series which culminates in the formation of lead 206. Alpha emitters are extremely toxic if ingested due to the large mass and the ionizing power of the alpha particle. The fourth one, electron capture. In this form of decay, a proton captures an electron orbiting in the innermost case shell. The proton becomes a neutron and electromagnetic radiation X-rays is given out. The fifth one, decay by emission of gamma rays. In some cases, alpha and beta particle emission also give rise to gamma rays, electromagnetic radiation similar to but with a shorter wavelength than X-rays. The gamma radiation has low ionizing power but high penetration. 
The toxicity of gamma radiation is similar to that of X-rays. Units of radioactivity Becquerel This is defined as 1 disintegration per second, 1 dps. It is the SI unit of radioactivity. Curie This is defined as the quantity of radioactive material in which the number of nuclear disintegrations per second is the same as that in 1 gram of radium, namely 3.7 into 10 to the power 10 or 37 GBq. For biological purposes, this unit is too large and the microcurie and millicurie are used. It is important to realize that the units Becquerel and Curie refer to the number of disintegrations actually occur in a sample not to the disintegrations detected, which generally will be only a proportion of the disintegrations occurring. Detected decays are referred to as counts, that is counts per second or CPS. Now coming to the detection and measurement of radioactivity. There are three commonly used methods of detecting and quantifying radioactivity. These are based on the ionization of gases, on excitation of solids or solutions and the ability of radioactivity to expose photographic emulsions that is autoradiography. The first one is the methods based upon gas ionization. If a charged particle passes through a gas, its electrostatic field dislodges orbital electrons from atoms sufficiently close to its path and causes ionization. The ability to induce ionization decreases in the order. If ionization occurs between a pair of electrodes enclosed in a suitable chamber, a pulse current flows. Ionization counters are sometimes called proportional counters, proportional because small voltage changes can affect the count rate. The Giger-Muller counter has a cylindrical shaped gas chamber and it operates at a high voltage. This makes the instrument less dependent on a stable voltage, so counters is cheaper and lighter. In ionization counters, the ions have to travel to their respective electrodes. Other ionizing particles entering the tube during this, the so-called dead time, are not detected and this reduces the counting efficiency. Ionization counters are used for routine monitoring of the laboratory to check for contamination. They are also useful in experimental situations where the presence or absence of radioactivity needs to be known rather than the absolute quantity. For example, quick screening of radioactive gels prior to autoradiography, checking that a level DNA probe is where you think it is and not down the sink or checking chromatographic fractions for level components. The second one is methods based upon excitation. Radioactive isotopes interact with matter in two ways, ionization and excitation. The latter effect leads an excited atom or compound, known as the fluor, to emit photons of light. The process is known as scintillation. When the light is detected by a photomultiplier, it forms the basis of scintillation counting. Essentially, a photomultiplier converts the energy of radiation into an electrical signal and the strength of the electric pulse that results is directly proportional to the energy of the original radioactive event. This means that two or even more isotopes can be separately detected and measured in the same sample provided they have sufficiently different emission energy spectra. Now, types of scintillation counting. There are two types of scintillation counting. The first one is solid scintillation counting. The sample is placed adjacent to a solid floor, example, sodium iodide. Solid scintillation counting is particularly useful for gamma emitting isotopes. This is because they can penetrate the floor. The counters can be small handheld devices with the floor attached to the photomultiplier tube 
or larger bench top machines with a well shaved floor design to automatically count many samples. The second one is the liquid scintillation counting. The sample is mixed with a scintillation fluid containing a solvent and one or more dissolved floors. This method is particularly useful in quantifying weak beta emitters such as tritium, carbon-14, and sulfur-35, which are frequently used in biological work. Scintillation fluids are called cocktails because there are different formulations made of a solvent such as toluene or diisopropyl naphthalene plus fluors such as 2,5-diphenyloxazole PPO. 1 for bis 5 phenyloxazole 2 il benzene nickname popop pronounced as it reads pop op or 240t butyl phenyl 5 400 bi phenyl 134 oxidiazole butyl pbd cocktails can be designed for counting organic samples or may contain detergent to facilitate counting of aqueous samples now let us see the advantages of scintillation counting. Scintillation counting is widely used in biological work and it has several advantages over gas ionization counting. Fluorescence is very fast so there is effectively no dead time. Counting efficiencies are high from about 50% for low energy beta emitters to 90% for high energy emitters. The ability to count samples of many types including liquids, solids, suspensions and gels. The general ease of sample preparation. The ability to count separately different isotopes in the same sample used in dual leveling experiments. Highly automated. Hundreds of samples can be counted automatically and built-in computer facilities carry out many forms of data analysis such as efficiency correction, graph plotting, radio immunoassay calculations, etc. Now let us see the disadvantages of scintillation counting. Cost of the instrument and cost per sample for scintillation fluid and counting vials and disposal of the organic waste. Potentially high background counts. This is due to photomultiplier noise but can be compensated for by using more than one tube, noise is random, but counts from a radioactive decay are simultaneous. The coincident counts only are recorded. Quenching. This is the name for reduction in counting efficiency caused by colored compounds that absorb the scintillated light or chemicals that interfere with the transfer of energy from radiation to the photomultiplier. Correcting for quenching contributes significantly the cost of scintillation counting. Chemiluminescence This is when chemical reactions between components of the samples to be counted and the scintillation cocktail produce scintillations that are unrelated to the radioactivity. Modern instruments can detect chemiluminescence and subtract it from the results automatically. Phospholuminescence this results from pigments in the sample absorbing light and remitting it. The solution is to keep the samples in the dark prior to counting. The third one is methods based upon exposure of photographic emulsions. Ionizing radiation acts upon a photographic emulsion or film to produce a latent image much as does visible light. This is called autoradiography. The emulsion or film contains silver halide crystals. As energy from the radioactive material is dissipated, the silver halide becomes negatively charged and is reduced to metallic silver, thus forming a particulate latent image. Photographic developers show these silver grains as a blackening of the film then fixers are used to remove any remaining silver halide and a permanent image results. It is a very sensitive technique and has been used in a wide variety of biological experiments. A good example is autoradiography of nucleic acids separated by gel electrophoresis. Now coming to the conclusion. 
radioisotopes such as tritium, carbon-14, phosphorus-32 and calcium-45 are excellent tools in biological research. Most radioisotopes are used as treasures in studies of primary and secondary metabolism, drug metabolism, transcription, translation, post-translational modifications such as protein phosphorylation, association of proteins with metals and transport of metals across biomembranes. Thank you.